there any, uh, let's see, start, the recording has started. In case there are any uh, issues with connectivity uh, with the internet. Um, so I, uh, to start off with, obviously, um, you have seen my email by now. <laughs> Otherwise, you wouldn't be here. Our class is now remote as of last Friday, so we will be meeting here in uh, Zoom meetings from now until the rest of the semester. Um, that also means that the uh, exams will be online as well. So the exams have, are moving to online. Um, we'll be using Pearson for the, for the online exams. Um, so it will be similar to, similar in nature to how the, um, how the practice exams are in Pearson, um, but it will be the actual exams. So there will still be practice exams. If you want to try those out, that's fine. Um, but just, just so that you're aware, that is, that is what we're doing there. Um, also, I was I am aware that some students had to um, had to relocate out of the dorms uh, and had to do that uh, on fairly short notice. Uh, so because of that, um, I extended the homework for Chapter Eight to be due this weekend instead of last weekend um, because this last week was uh, last weekend was was chaos would have been especially for those students that had to had to re relocate. Um, so I did change the, the due dates on those. Um, so just so that you guys are aware of that. Um, but with that out of the way, are there any, uh, any questions on any of the material or homework? Any, any questions, comments um, so far before we get started in, into the material today? And you can either use uh, use your microphone, use audio, I will be listening, or uh, chat. I will be uh, keeping an eye on chat. Um, I know there's a little bit of a delay between when I say something and, and when, uh, when you guys hear it, as well as depending on if you want to use chat, depending on your, um, depending on your device, it might be difficult to your type. Uh, so I will be keeping an eye on that. All right. Uh, I'm not seeing any questions. Uh, you might still be typing. So I'm, I, like I said, I'm going to keep my eye on the chat. Um, and I will answer questions as I see them. Uh, pertaining to the material, but uh, if there are no questions, we'll go ahead and switch to the material, jump into chapter nine. Uh, so let me pull up my digital paper here. All right, uh, and let me also pull up that, uh, I always forget that this disables the chat when I switch. Okay, there we go. Now I can see the chat. And just to make sure, you, can you guys see the, uh, did I switch to the, <laughs> to the right screen here? Can you guys see the digital paper? Yes, okay, all right. Excellent, so let's go ahead and begin. Um, so chapter nine, is on modeling. Uh, I'm not going to write out the entire uh, the entire title that the author uses here. Uh, so basically, we're using models or equations. Those are going to be the same. Uh, same word um, for the section to solve problems. So not only story problems, but also um, 
just general equation problems. And for this section, we'll be, uh, for this chapter, we'll be doing two sections. We're going to be doing uh, section 9b, which is on linear modeling, and 9c, which is exponential modeling. Um, so this is going to follow uh, very much in the same vein as chapter 8. Um, for the linear modeling, we're going in, into a little bit more detail uh, than what we, than we did in chapter 8. And uh, for the exponential modeling, it will be more or less about the same, uh, same amount of depth that we had before. So let's go ahead and start with our linear models. So 9b linear modeling. All right. Now with, with linear models, they, there are a couple of uh, important properties that we're going to go, go over and talk about how to identify those. Um, one of the most important things of linear models is that uh, linear models, or uh, we, again, we can call these linear equations or linear functions, each one of those three phrases means the same thing for us. Uh, linear models, linear functions, linear equations. Um, these are a straight line when graphed. So that is the first thing that we have, straight line when graphed. And that is where the word uh, linear comes from, since when you graph it, you get a line. So we have our uh, definition there. Now, the uh, couple of properties that we have, uh, first is slope. So all linear models or functions And again, I'm gonna put that in parentheses since we're using that, uh, those two phrases interchangeably. Have a constant rate of change. Oh. Sorry, I have, uh, I have to adjust a little bit here. Constant rate of change. which we call uh, the slope. So when we're talking about a linear function or a linear model, the slope is the rate of change. Um, and one of the things that we're going to be identifying then when we're looking at these problems in this section is the slope. Uh, so when you are looking at uh, some of the story problems, you'll either see it um, in, in the question, it will say the slope is this, or it will say uh, it has this as a rate of change. And so then when you see that, that phrase rate of change or rate, um, then that you know is the slope. You're, you're being told that's what the slope is. And the way that we identify that uh, mathematically, our rate of change, equation or the slope is the change in the y variable divided by the change in the x variable. So that's how we uh, generally look at it. There are other, other ways to define it, but that's, that's what we'll go with or this one. Uh, now, when you are graphing things, remember the uh, x variable goes left, right, the y variable goes up, down. Uh, so oftentimes, because we're looking at the change in the y variable, which is up, down, we call that the rise, how, how much is it rising? Uh, and the change in the x, y, uh, left, right, change in the x, that is how far it goes left or right, we call that the run. So you might 
have seen this uh, referred to in other courses as the rise over run. And that's where that comes from. Since uh, you change in the X, uh, change in the Y, that's how much it is rising. And the change in the X, that's how much it runs left or right. So the rise over run. Uh, now, we are going to look at uh, the equation for these, but before we do that, I want to tie this into what we did in chapter eight. Uh, so I want to look at a quick example with uh, slope. And this one is uh, from section 8a, we had this example. And I'm not going to write the entire example. We're not going to uh, run through the example again, because uh, that would be the, we'd end up with the same result. But I do, again, I want to tie in slope. So I'm just going to write the important part. Uh, the enrollment at Belmont High School increases by 25 students per year. Okay, so if you remember from uh, 8a from chap uh, section 8a from chapter 8, we had this example about Belmont High School where the enrollment was increasing by 25 students per year. There was a little bit more to the example, uh, but that is uh, the important part with slope. So whenever you see a uh, constant rate or rate of change, or you see uh, a phrase like this, students per year, in this case, then that is going to be the rate of change or slope. So what we have here is that the rate of change is going to be, and uh, we have students per year. Um, if you recall from that section that we did on units and on unit conversions, we can write this as a fraction. So that's going to be 25 students is going to be our numerator, the top of the fraction. And uh, one year is going to be the denominator. Or we can just say that is 25. So the rate of change for the enrollment at this high school is 25 students per year. Or we, uh, if we want just the numerical value, we just say that's 25. Um, now the slope, the rate of change, the slope can be positive or negative. Positive indicates that the number is increasing and negative means that the number is decreasing. So just as, as before, we can have positive or negative numbers. In this case, the enrollment is going up, is increasing. So it is a positive. And this also tells us one other thing, uh, well, two other things as well. So remember here, the slope is the change in the y variable over the change in the x variable. So we have our uh, y variable, which we call the uh, dependent variable is the number of students. And we have our x variable, which is the independent variable. Is the number of years. Since we have the uh, change in, let's go, let me scroll back up a little bit. Since the slope is the change in the y variable over the change in the x variable, the y variable, which we sometimes also refer to as the dependent variable for this problem would be the number of students and the x variable would be our, or also known as our independent variable is the number of years. So we can get uh, also the uh, dependent and independent variables or the x and y variables from the slope. Uh, so again, there was more to this problem when we went over it um, 
more to this example when we went over it last class in chapter eight, uh, but I just wanted to tie this in from last, last section. Uh, any questions up to this point? And you can feel free to either use the audio or the chat. And I will be keeping my eye on chat in case there are any questions. Okay. Uh, I'm not seeing any questions yet, so I'm going to move forward. Uh, but if you do have a question, feel free to ask. And I will answer it as soon as I see the question. Okay. Uh, that, is a, that is a good question. Um, uh, yes, all of the tests, including the final, will be online now that this class is remote. Yes, uh, we'll be using Pearson for test three and for the final. Um, okay. So we have the general formula. For a linear function or a linear model is y equals b plus mx where here again we have the y is the dependent variable the x is the independent variable here we have m is the slope or rate of change. Okay, sorry, hold on one second. Let me readjust that. Rate of change. When I switch to the online format, I always forget that it opens a couple of other windows doesn't allow me to write past a certain point. <laughs> so I have to adjust the paper sometimes. Uh, so M is the slope or the rate of change. And uh, B is the initial value or the y-intercept, intercept, intercept uh, value. And so this is going to come into play when we are graphing, which we are going to graph a little bit here. So that is our uh, general formula. Uh, now, just to try and keep this more or less the same or similar to what we had before, um, in chapter eight, the equation that I gave you, Oh, sorry, I had a sneeze coming. Um, was A equals I plus C times T. That was from chapter eight. Where here, uh, the, the dependent variable we used was A, this was I, the slope was uh, C. So you'll notice it is exactly the same equation, it's just in a different form. So. Um, Again, not a different form as in just different variables we're using for, for these. Uh, so let's look at an example. For this one, um, and there are going to be a few different types of problems in this section. There's going to be some uh, direct questions involving linear equations. So they'll give you a linear equation or model and ask you questions about it. So we'll do a question like that first. And then the uh, other type of question is they, it will be a story problem and you'll have to uh, model the situation using a linear equation. 
And so you'll, you'll come up with the equation and then you'll uh, answer some questions uh, using the equation. Uh, one more thing that I want to talk about here before we go uh, on the y-intercept is a point which is uh, zero comma b. Uh, but when we're talking about the y-intercept value or the initial value, that is uh, just the value b. Okay, so let's look at our first example. This first one, again, we're just going to look at a linear equation, look at its properties, um, graph it, and then we'll apply it to a story problem, uh, the linear modeling. So for this example, let's consider the equation. y equals negative 3x plus 1. Okay, we want to know what is the slope? And y-intercept? And uh, we want to graph the equation. All right, so the first thing, let's look at slope. Uh, one thing that I do want to mention with these, uh, with these uh, equations, if it's a linear equation, you, could, you can use different variables besides y and x, um, which is also why we uh, say dependent and independent variables. Um, in general, when, when you're given an equation, it will be in this form. Um, this is either going to be the y equals uh, b plus mx, or it's going to be uh, y equals mx plus b. Because um, with addition, we can change the order and nothing changes in the equation. So, uh, when we're looking for the slope, the slope is the value that is multiplied to the variable on, on the uh, right-hand side of our equation. So here we look at what is the equation be, what is the variable, uh, and what is the value being multiplied to the variable. In this case, variable is x, and what we are multiplying to the x is a negative three. So the slope is a negative three. Or we could say that is a negative three over one, which we're going to use when we graph. Uh, next, what is the y-intercept? So the y-intercept is a point, which is zero comma b. In this case, b is one, since that is the constant value here that is not multiplied to a, a variable. So we have our slope, and we have our y-intercept. All right, any questions up to this point? Okay. Not seeing any questions. I will keep my eye on chat, but we'll move forward then. So to graph this, let's go ahead and get our uh, y-axis here. And our x-axis. Now, when you're graphing lines, um, usually, well, <laughs> you only need two points, right? Because any two points you draw, you can you connect with a straight line and that that, that defines your line. So generally when we're graphing these, we're going to start with the y-intercept. In this case, that is zero, negative one. So we go up to, or sorry, zero, positive one. So the y-intercept is always going to be uh, this distance, uh, b distance, either up if it's positive or down if it's negative on the uh, y-axis. Now the slope is negative three, over one, or we could say it's three 
over negative one. So to uh, kind of emphasize what we're doing with that, we, we take our y-intercept and we can go, uh, the rise is negative three. So we go negative three down. And then the run is one. So we go one unit over and this gives us our point. Or we can go three units up. So we go one, two, three and then one negative one unit for our run and this gives us our line uh, now again you don't need both of those points i just wanted to emphasize uh, you could go either direction so when it's positive they both go in the positive direction or both go in the negative direction if it's negative if the slope is negative one is positive the other is negative so we either go up three to the left one or down three to the right one in this case. Uh, so that's what our graph looks like. All right, any questions on, on this first example? Let me scroll back up so we can see the, the entire question here. All right. And again, with the questions, you can either type in chat or use the audio if you're brave enough. I am listening and I'm keeping my eye on chat, um, whichever one you are more comfortable with. Okay, and I'm not seeing any questions. So we'll move on and keeping my eye on chat though. All right, so the, um, the first type of when we're just given the equation is is relatively straightforward. We just have to identify what is the slope, what is the y-intercept generally, and what does the graph look like. Uh, for this next part, we're going to be looking at a story problem and creating a linear model or a linear equation or a linear function. Again, we're using those three phrases interchangeably to represent the situation and then to answer some questions involving the situation. Uh, so generally, when you have the story problem, it's going to be um, generally a two-step process. Step one, find the equation. And then step two, answer the questions using the equation. Uh, in a lot of the homework, it will step you through it. So the first part will be, what is the equation? Second part then will be answering the question um, that is given. Uh, although sometimes they will skip and go to the uh, just answering the question directly, but you should be in the habit, um, when you're doing these modeling problems, uh, you should be in the habit, should get in the habit of finding the equation for these problems. So that should always be the, the first thing that you do. If you are not given the equation, what is the equation? So that is the, that is the first step. All right, so let's look at this example. So for this example, we have the price of a particular model of car is $10,000 today. and rises with a constant rate of $980 per year. And we want to know how much will the car be in 2.7 years? All right, so here is our first 
story problem uh, for our modeling. So we're given the price of a particular model of car is $10,000. Uh, and this is rising with a constant rate of $980 per year. We want to know how much will the car be in 2.7 years. Uh, so step one, first thing we want to do is uh, find the equation. And we're going to uh, use P for price. And T for years. All right, so um, in the homework, uh, a lot of times, well, I should phrase that differently. With these problems, a lot of times um, you'll want to use a variable instead of X and Y a variable that will make more sense in the context of the problem. So here, P for price, T for, for time, for years. Um, also with Pearson, when you're inputting the, the equation, they will generally tell you what variables they want you to use. So in, in, a, in this example, they would say use P for price, T for time. Um, and so one of the things that we will have to do uh, is, is uh, come up with the equation using uh, not only the correct form, but also using the variables that were given. Uh, but we'll, we'll be able to, to uh, we'll sort through that. All right, so the first thing that we should note, or the first thing that I want to look at is that we have, we're given a constant rate so there's our rate of change of $980 per year. So notice here, this is our slope. Uh, sorry, I have to move the, the page over to right here on this side. So the slope is $980. Need to move it over a little bit further, sorry. Uh, dollars per one year. And remember the slope tells us, um, the rate of change tells us two things. It tells us the slope, but it also tells us what variable is the Y variable or the dependent variable, and which variable is the X variable or the uh, independent variable. All right, I need a new page here. Okay, so we have the slope. is 980 and that is dollars per year. And so what this tells us is that the uh, Y variable or the dependent variable is price. And the X variable or the independent variable is time, which we are using here in this example, T for time. Okay, so our equation the general equation is y equals b plus mx. So uh, for this example, we're replacing y with p because that's price. Uh, b we haven't talked about yet, so we'll leave that alone. M is our slope, which was 980. And instead of X, we're using T. So we use T for time there. All right, now we're not entirely finished. We have a little bit more to do um, with this equation before we move forward. But I want to uh, check and ask if there are any questions 
uh, to see to make sure that you guys are following along. So are there any questions up to this point? And I'll give a couple of minutes or I guess a minute to see if any questions appear in chat. All right. Um, you might still be typing, so I'll keep my eye there. Oh, yes, um, I am currently recording, recording this lecture, yes. So this will be posted to Web Campus, yes. All right, so let's go back to the previous page. Uh, so we have the price of this car is $10,000 today. Uh, now remember the variable the, uh, B stands for the initial value or initial price in this case, that is $10,000. So this is B. Let's go back here. The initial price initial price, which is B is $10,000. So the equation is given by the price equals $10,000 plus $980 per year times T. So that's our first step. Step one, find the equation. Uh, now again, you might have to change the variables for y and x. You might um, be given in this case, we want uh, price to be p and we want time to be t. Uh, so instead of what x and y, you'll, you'll be using p and t in this example. Um, but you can, you can uh, get most of that information from the slope. All right, so there's our equation. Uh, step two, now we want to solve the question that was asked. So let's go back to our, our problem here. The question that was asked, how much will the car be in 2.7 years? So that is now the question that we're going to answer. So step two, uh, we replace T with 2.7 years. So we have the price is equal to 10,000 uh, huh? 10, plus 980 times 2.7. And then uh, use your calculator. Hopefully you have yours so you can follow along and then see what we get. So we, we type in 10,000 plus 980 times our 2.7. And here we get 12,646 dollars. All right. And then the last part is going to be the graph. So let's look at the graph for this. Uh, now for this one, since we're talking about uh, time and time only goes forward, I'm not going to have the negative part of the, of the X or Y axis here. Now the x and the y axis we had, uh, so I have to move this up so I can actually write on the page. Uh, this one, the x variable or the dependent, uh, yeah, dependent variable is time in this case, so that is t. 
and the y variable or the independent variable is price, which is p. So to graph this, first we graph the y-intercept, that is 10,000. So we go up to 10,000 here on our graph. So this would be 10,000. And we do the slope. The slope is 980 over 1. So we go uh, 980 up. And we go 1 over. So here is 1. And this gives us our second point. And here is our equation. Um, now again, this is not to scale. This is at 10,000. And the rise here is at 980. But I wanted, uh, I wanted to make it relatively clear, at least here on the notes, uh, that we're going up 980. So you'd want to make that a little more uh, close to approximate, it looks like, I've went up uh, 5,000 instead of 980. Um, but in this case, I just wanted to make it, make it clear. So any questions on this example? There's one year, here would be two years, here would be three years. And just to emphasize what we had, the x variable, this is our independent variable. And so the y variable here, this is our dependent variable. This one is dependent. Okay. Uh, that is section 9b. So 9b, again, go, we go into a little more depth. Uh, we include slope and y-intercept, uh, which we didn't have before. And the equation, which again, I, I did give you the equation, um, but the author did not. So a um, little bit more in depth in that, as well as graphing. Um, so that is section 9b. For 9c, uh, we're, we're not going to do uh, anything with the graphs. Graphing exponential, uh, exponential curves is not necessarily the, it's a, it's a little more in depth than what we want to do for this course, uh, but we will be looking at equations. So in uh, 9c, because we're looking at exponential models, um, the majority of these are just going to be uh, story problems. And again, it's going to be a two-step problem. Step one, find the equation. Step two, from the equation, solve the given question. All right, so let me get a, a fresh page here and adjust this on my screen so I can write on it without getting into those other windows that the streaming lecture brings up. Okay, 9C, exponential modeling. All right, so with the exponential modeling, um, Let's go ahead and start with our equation. So the equation that the author gives us for this one is Q equals Q naught, that's a Q with a subscript zero, times parentheses one plus R to the power of T. Uh, where here Q naught, uh, Q is the value after T time, so that could be uh, years or weeks or days, depending on the units that were given. Q naught is the initial value. Uh, R, we call the fractional growth rate. 
or decay rate. So um, just as a reminder from chapter eight, if the amount is increasing, then it's uh, growth. If it's decreasing, then it's decay. And then T is time. Now, what I gave you in chapter eight, uh, let me make sure I use the same variables that I did in class. The equation I gave you in class was A equals I times one plus P to the power of T. So again, same equation, we're just using different variables here. All right, so let's look at an example. Uh, maybe I should emphasize this one was from uh, chapter eight equation. All right, uh, so let's look at an example. So this example, we have a privately owned forest. Uh, has 1,500,000 acres of old growth that needs to be cleared, old growth uh, being cleared. At a rate of 3% per year. And we want to know how many acres have yet to be cleared after five years. All right. Uh, let me scroll back up so we have the equation. So the equation we're using is Q equals Q naught times one plus R to the power of T. Uh, when we're finding the equation, generally we'll be looking for the initial amount Q naught and the fractional growth rate R. So in this case, uh, Q, which is the initial amount, uh, sorry, Q naught, which is the initial amount, is what? How, what is the initial amount of acres that we have to clear? One point five million. Good. So one million five hundred thousand, or one point five million. Good. R the rate that this is being cleared is three percent. We want this in decimal form, so that's going to be zero point zero three. Now here we have to be a little bit careful because the rate is either going to be positive or negative. So think about this for a moment in the context of the problem. So we have this, this uh, 1.5 million acres and we are clearing old growth. So as time moves on, is the amount of acres going to increase or decrease from the context of this problem? Okay, I see one, one answer. going to decrease because as we're clearing out the growth we have less growth to clear so the amount of acres that we have is decreasing that means that this rate good now I see two answers excellent and I realize there's a little bit of a delay so I apologize for that um, is going to be negative so we now have negative three percent or negative 0 0.3 so that is one thing uh, to watch out for in this homework they're going to try and 
well, not necessarily try to trip you up on, but is easy to get tripped up on, is whether the rate is increasing or decreasing. In this case, it's decreasing. We're clearing the forest. That means the amount that we have left to clear is going down. So this, this is an exponential uh, decay problem, not an exponential growth. So our equation is Q equals 1.5 million, so uh, the 1 million 500,000 times 1 minus 0 0.03 to the power of t. So step one, find our equation that is given here. So maybe I should write that here. Uh, nope, it's not going to let me write. That's all right. All right. Oh, well, if I move the page over. Step one, find equation. OK. Uh, step two, now, we want to know how many acres will there be left to clear after five years? So step two, we plug in t equals five. So we have our, uh, the amount is going to be 1.5 million times 1 minus 0 0.03 to the fifth power. Now we did have uh, something similar to this in our previous examples, but let's go through how do we, uh, how do we enter this into a calculator? So let me go to my calculator here. And let me just check that I'm doing this correctly. Uh, can you guys see this online calculator? Yes, okay, excellent. Excellent, all right. So to plug this into the calculator, we'll do the uh, 15, or the 1.5 million, the 1,500,000. Uh, let me make sure I have the right number of zeros here. Okay, times parentheses, and we have our one minus the 0 0.03 parentheses. This one has the uh, y to the x. Well, in this, in this case, it has x to the y, but that's more or less the same thing. Parentheses, our power is five parentheses. Hit equals, and this gives us 12, uh, sorry, not, I need to be careful with, 1,288,101 acres, or 1.3 million acres. All right, so let's go back to our paper. So here we get that the amount left to clear is 1,288,101 acres left to clear. All right. All right, so any questions on this first example? Uh, now, one thing, um, let me see if I can fit this on, on the page, the problem on the page. Uh, one thing that you will see in, um, in a lot of real world situations is you want the equation to, you want to not only look at five years, but after 10 years, after 20 years, after 30 years, uh, which is why we find the equation first. Uh, then you can just plug in the different values for t the different years and get the, the different amounts that will be left. Um, anyways. No other questions. I do want to write down one more thing. Uh, so let me get this cl uh, clean page here. So we have our equations. Um, for exponential models. So we had our first equation 
was q equals q naught times one plus r to the power of t. And this is if we are given the percent change r. And remember the Ah, uh, yes, that's correct. That is the equation. Um, that was a question from chat. Yep, good. Well, um, uh, to answer that question in the chat, sorry, uh, the R can be positive or negative. In, the, in that case, it was negative, so it ended up being 1 plus a negative R, which is 1 minus R, um, which actually is a good point. So. Um, in general, this equation, remember, if the amount is increasing, then it's plus r. If the amount is decreasing, then it's going to be minus r. And that's a forgiven the percent change. Okay. Uh, we have two more equations that are given to us, uh, but these will look very familiar. Uh, q equals q naught times 2 to the power of t divided by t subscript double, and this is if we are given doubling time, which is T subscript double. And the third equation is Q equals Q naught times one half to the power of T divided by capital T half. And that's if we are given half-life, uh, which is T subscript half. And this is on page uh, 565 in the textbook. Uh, so you'll see that with the um, doubling time and the half-life, that is exactly the same equations that we had before. Again, just with some different variables. Um, perhaps that's why the author split it up, but I'm not entirely sure why the author would, would use different variables there. Um, so the half-life and the double time uh, formulas, using those are exactly the same as what we had in chapter eight. Um, so, uh, just a repeat of that. Um, any other questions? Any questions, comments up to this point? All right. So that is section uh, 9C. So chapter 9 is on the uh, linear modeling and exponential modeling. So basically coming up with what is the linear equation that represents the situation or if it's exponential, what is the exponential equation that represents the situation. And then using that equation, applying that equation to uh, answer a given question. Uh, so take, for example, what is the price of the, of the vehicle after so many years? Or how many bacteria are there after so, so many hours or so many weeks? Um, and it, it mirrors, again, it mirrors very closely to what we did in Chapter 8. Uh, but that is, that is Chapter 9. So uh, that is all of the material that we have. Uh, test 3, so next class on Thursday. <clears throat> On Thursday, we're going to be looking at the review, reviewing for the exam. And then on Tuesday of next week will be the exam. Uh, now, because of uh, time zones and possible internet connectivity issues, I think what I will do is have the exam open for 24 hours on that day. I won't have a time limit because um, it wouldn't really be fair if you logged in for 10 minutes and then had the internet kick you off. and that. So, um, so I think we'll, we'll do that, uh, but that will be next Tuesday. And we won't have a lecture next Tuesday uh, since 
we would, if this was, so if we were still in person, you would come to class, you'd take the exam, that would be the class. So we're basically going to be doing the same thing except this is now remote. So that means Tuesday is your test day. So you take the exam on Tuesday and then on, uh, well, I guess that Thursday is the break, but the, the uh, next week, Tuesday, we'll, we'll begin again with uh, reviewing for the final exam. Um, so next Tuesday, no, next class, which is Thursday. I keep forgetting today's Tuesday. Next class, which is Thursday, is our review. Then the class after that is test three. That's going to be next Tuesday, next week, one week from today. That Thursday, next Thursday is your Thanksgiving break. And then the week after is studies week and then the final exam after, after that. So that's where we're headed. Um, any last minute questions before I let you guys go? Oh, project three. Um, that is a good question. I will be organizing the, uh, I'll be organizing the groups uh, this week for project three. Uh, I have not yet received the data, so we might, I'm going to look at uh, where the data is at. Uh, I might just be looking in the wrong place for it. Um, worst case scenario, we'll just use a previous semester's data um, for the project. And um, we'll, so we'll, we'll talk about that next class. Uh, but I will be organizing those groups this, this week, probably tonight. Um, any other questions? Okay. Uh, well, thank you guys uh, very much for coming. Thank you for your patience. I uh, know these, these are crazy times that we're living in. Uh, thank you for showing up. Uh, if you do have any questions, you're more than welcome to send me an email or come to office hours, uh, digital office hours. Um, otherwise, I will see you next class for a review and have a wonderful day. And I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording here.